Hello Divas, Dudes and Dolls, I'm Caricature and welcome back to my quick, quippy and quintessential little review show, Fairy Slay, where we go over each and every main stage look on Drag Race Philippines Season 3. I am very tired and I have a lot of editing and a lot of recording to do today and a lot of shenanigans in general, so uh, I look very sleepy so we're getting sunglasses today. Anyways, y'all should know how this show works by now if I think a look is successful in terms of meeting the assignment But it isn't incredible. We give it an okay. If I enjoy it a lot, we give it a slay And if there's anything going wrong with it that makes me not like it so much, we give it an A and That's all in efforts to find my weekly slay of the day, my favorite look of each and every episode That will go head to head up against our current ranked slay of the season Which is Kiana's per yeah look from episode 3. Whichever look holds that top spot by the end will get an illustration at some point Point at least. Sneak peeks and previews of that illustration and every other artistic thing I do basically will be coming to Patreon, but you can join for free to get a full review of my opinions on all of these lip syncs. So this week was a Lollapurooza, so there is no runway, so we strictly have six performance looks to go over for this episode, so I do not imagine that this will take very long. That being said, I'm so sad this season is almost over. We really only have like two episodes left, and then we crown our new winner. So in the meantime, if you want to see all of my opinions for the rest of the season you can check that out on the rest of the playlist for Philippines season 3 be sure to like comment and subscribe so that way you can stay in the know with all of the other videos coming for this season anywho let's dive on in and get into these looks okie dokie first up we have mix Chanel I do not like this little curly orphan Annie wig that she starts off with. The print on the outfit she starts off in is fine, but I think the reveal outfit is a successful reveal in terms of levels because the outfit underneath is much more exciting than the outfit on top. I like this kind of motocross orange black and white moment. I like the blonde hair on her. Her makeup looks great. I will say, I wasn't her biggest fan over the course of the season. I really was not a fan of this little bitchy exit line that she has where she she says basically that she's the only person who has ever done anything for their local community. That just, I don't know. That just felt like a bitter move. Uh, I was not a fan of it and it, it was not cute. It was a really like sour note to go out on. So. I hope it was just like her emotions talking in the moment and she just didn't think through the phrasing all that properly. But going back to the look, I wasn't totally over the moon about it, so I'm just going to give it an okay. Then we have Tita Baby who starts off in this sort of like caftan moment that turns into just a little bodysuit. It's fine, like it's a decent performance look. I really wasn't blown away with either one of these looks. I like this hair on her a lot. I like the cut and the silhouette of both of these outfits on her. However, I do think that her second outfit is worse, but it does kind of give like 80s jazzercise in a weird way. I think she just needed leg warmers. Kind of gave me her little dance challenge from episode one. Just a smidge. This is also going to be an okay for me. Then we have Angel who starts off in this absolutely massive wig for her, which I was kind of excited about. I didn't think it was going to stay on. I was right. Of course, it's going to end up being a ponytail situation underneath it all. The starting outfit, like the coat, it was clearly a reveal coat. I also did not expect that to stay on very long. The outfit underneath it was fine. I think the end reveal when she's in like the little strappy bodysuit that's like next to nothing with the ponytail, that's very quintessentially her. So I think it made sense for her style and her aesthetic. I thought her performance was also really fun here. And I was not mad at this. I also did not love it in terms of just the detail choices, and it's nothing I haven't already seen before from her. So for me, this is also just okay. <laughs> then we have Kiana up next, and Kiana's got a look that I thought was more successful just because it was one of the more interesting ones. It, yes, it's a performance outfit, but I, I'm a big fan of asymmetrical bodysuits that have like the one elevated shoulder and sleeve and then the one opposite leg. I just think it looks really streamlined. It's very David Bowie, and I really like the embellishment details on this, the stonework on the shoulder piece especially I was a big fan of. I really like the color blocking, the way that it's all paneled out. I was definitely a fan of that. And she's another one I thought was a good, really solid performer in this episode. This was a tighter lip sync. I think had the wig reveal not gone the way that it did, maybe she would have beaten Angel. Maybe, but I still don't think she did. 
This outfit though was one of my favorites out of the episode. For me, this was a slay. And then we have Maxi up next. And for me, I did not realize how good Maxi would look in a bang, like the one she starts with. The little turf bang that she has underneath it for that first wig reveal wasn't a fan of. The second wig reveal was cute, but it's very clearly like slipping off of her head as she performs. The coat she starts off in this yellow moment, really, really nice. I actually really like it. It's one of my favorite individual pieces that we see on the runway this week. The bodysuit underneath that's entirely rhinestoned looks so good on stage. What a good performance outfit. I do wish it had been like not just all clear stones. I wish there had been some sort of pattern or design to it. Like I, I love a bodysuit that's like this that sort of has like a nude illusion stoned into it. I just think it looks really good. So that would have been nice to see or something exciting to see because then it would have had like the the reveal. I still found this to be incredibly successful. I cannot get over how good she looks though in this first wig. This is a slay. And then finally we have Zimba Ding. Again, this little orphan Annie wig. What is it with them this episode? If I had a nickel for every time a queen on this episode wore a little orphan Annie wig, I would have two. But like, it's strange that it happened twice. The outfit though, I enjoy. I really like the strappy nature of this, the grommet work. It kind of gives me a little bit of Lilu from the fifth element, that white outfit. I think the hair post review is more successful than the hair she starts off in. I think the only real issue that I had with this outfit was that the bodysuit, like the nude illusion part of it underneath the white strappy stuff through the midsection, it felt a little bulky on her. It kind of got bunched up in some weird spots. I think that was the biggest detriment to the whole thing. That being said, this is still one of the better looks out of the six. This is a slay. That wraps up all six of these looks this week. And next week is going to be a doozy because we're seeing all the eliminated girls come back. Those looks will be reviewed over on Patreon instead of on here. because We're focusing just on the people who are still in the competition. Now, it's time to pick our slay of the day from these six performance outfits. And for me, there's really only one answer. There are two viable candidates, but there is really only one answer for me and that's Maxi. So I was a big fan of this look. I loved this hair. I loved this bodysuit. I loved the robe that she starts off in. Everything about this was great top to bottom. And my God, did she devour in this episode. Last week, I got the feeling that this was sort of the Philippine equivalent of Sasha Colby being on season 15 of Drag Race, where basically everyone else is just competing for second place. This episode really cemented her winner storyline, in my opinion. So I would not be at all shocked if we see her taking home the crown in a couple of weeks. That's gonna be it for me today. We will see you all in the next one. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe once again, join the Patreon for free, or at a tier level, either way helps a ton. And we will see you whenever we see you. And buckle up y'all because we've got UK season six, the next Global All Stars review, the next Espanya review, Dragula season six will start up on Tuesday. And then once Philippines ends, we've got Drag Race Thailand. So that cast promo review will probably be filmed the next week. I keep putting it off because life has gotten kind of crazy this last week or two. It'll come eventually, I promise. Along with some other fun things I'm trying to squeeze out. So we'll see you in the next one. Be sure to go out there, y'all. Stay kind, stay queer, and make sure that your day is very slay.